Romer's law is a widely cited principle in healthcare policy which states that hospital beds that are built tend to be used. It simply means that as the supply of hospital beds increases, the use of hospital services also increases. It also fosters the belief that excess hospital beds lead to an overutilization of hospital services when the demand outpaces the population's actual need for services. This rule was deduced by the American Health Services researcher Milton Romer, working at the UCLA School of Public Health. Roma and colleagues found a positive correlation between the number of short-term general hospital beds available per thousand population and number of hospital days used per thousand population. PubMed Central, U.S. National Library of Medicine, provide compelling evidence to support this law. They found that a positive, significant relationship exists between hospital bed availability and hospital utilization rates while controlling for the most widely accepted determinants of hospital utilization. Over the years, the Dartmouth Atlas project has also consistently shown a positive association between the supply of staffed hospital beds per thousand residents and the hospitalization rate for medical, non-surgical conditions among Medicare patients. The report stated, admissions to intensive care units are correlated with the supply of ICU beds. Rates of diagnostic testing and imaging exams are correlated with the supply of the equipment that is needed to produce the tests. The relationship between the supply of physicians and physician visit rates, particularly in those specialties focused on treating chronic illnesses, is similar to the relationship between bed supply and hospitalization rates. Therefore, available capacity governs the frequency of visits. Researchers with the Michigan State University Geography Department have concluded that there's compelling evidence that a relationship exists between hospital bed availability and hospitalization rates. This study provides evidence for the effect of Romer's law, thus suggesting that variations in hospitalization rates have origins in the availability of hospital beds. The MSU researchers wrote, these findings suggest continued regulation of hospital bed supply to assist in controlling hospital utilization is justified. CON or Certificate of Need gets traced back to Dr. Milton Romer. CON is a controversial process where, in an effort to keep costs down, healthcare institutions must prove the necessity of a new facility before it can be built. Researchers suggest that over the past 40 years, CON programs have not been successful in controlling healthcare costs. Opponents argue that CON stifles competition and the free market regulation of costs. Others see CON as a source of corruption. We shall have to decide what proportion of our resources is to be devoted to hospital and medical care in competition with the demands for aircraft carriers and rockets, schools and roads, houses and automobiles, cigarettes and televisions. Romer and Shane wrote, This is the kind of decision that calls for the concerted attention of all elements of our society, far more than doctors and hospital administrators are concerned. On the surface, there is nothing unusual about this correlation between capacity and utilization. In the real world, actual quantity supplied must always be equal to actual quantity demanded. Whatever is produced must end up somewhere, but not always at the expected price. The general law of supply and demand says that when the expected quantity supplied exceeds the expected quantity demanded at a certain price, the price will fall to clear out the excess supply. What is unusual about hospital services is that the quantity demanded always matches the quantity supplied at the predetermined prices. Medicare Reimbursement Rates not only that price may not fall, it may increase instead because greater marginal cost of increased supply must be covered. This anomaly is known as Romer's Law, which says that at a built hospital bed is a filled bed, Romer. Two reasons explain such supply-induced demand. One, in contrast to effective care and preference-sensitive care, where clinicians have strong opinions on the need for specific interventions, Medical theories and medical evidence play little role in governing the frequency of use of supply-sensitive services. 
For patients at a given stage in the progression of chronic illness, medical textbooks contain no evidence-based clinical guidelines for scheduling patients for return visits, when to hospitalize or admit to intensive care, when to refer to a medical specialist, and for most conditions, when to order a diagnostic or imaging test, when Berg. Second, Medicare payments are often based on treatment rather than on outcome with only a loose overall budget constraint. If there is a surplus capacity, more treatment will be ordered to fill available capacity. Unlike medical services, where the budget is from funds pooled through some insurance schemes, there is no guaranteed demand on ordinary goods because consumers spend their own money upon each purchase. If sellers oversupply a good or service, they just have to absorb the loss by lowering their target price. People who critique the law believe that the law fails because people are not eager to spend time in a hospital bed even if the cost is zero. It's not exactly a fun place. People aren't waiting to be admitted just because there's an availability of beds. If the law were true, hospital occupancy should approach 100% at all times. In fact, occupancy rates vary considerably over time and from place to place. Some years they are up, others they are down. For example, from 1970 to 2000, national hospital occupancy rates dropped from 77% to 67%, according to the National Center for Health Statistics. Apparently, one-third of built beds were not filled beds during this period. Critics say that Romer's law is statistically untrue. It is behaviorally untrue, yet it has been the basis for virtually all of the health policy initiatives of the last 40 years including Certificate of Need, National Health Planning, Hospital Rate Setting, Health Maintenance Organizations, and more recently, Accountable Care Organizations, Pay for Performance, and Comparative Effectiveness Research. All in all, we can say that the law is still the center of a lot of medical debates. That was all for this video. Thank you for watching. Do like, share, and subscribe to our channel, Explified. Check out our channel for more interesting content.